Yeah. In California, there was a bunch of homes down in the uh, Animal Valley area. So I've been there for 20, 30 years. These people were off the grid completely, running their own business, 10 miles from the nearest anything. And the county came in and said, I'm telling Camel here, this is not an approved dwelling. We're going to be bulldozing it next week. Get out today. And they went in, bulldozed entire homes and properties and said, You have no legal right to be on your own property unless you're getting power and water from us. So yeah, even if it's 20 miles away, that's not our problem. You've got to pay to bring it to you. So the freedom has disappeared. The corporations own everything. Or would that be the government? Hell, I don't know. I can't keep track of it. You Freedom. you are having a lot better effect overseas. You are doing more business overseas than you are doing in your own country right now. Is that is that accurate? <laughs> in 35 years, I tried not to go overseas. Now. We're going overseas, and we have more business happening in uh, Africa, India, China, Russia, and South America than we do the U.S., yes. They all want clean air. They would all like to get better mileage, and they are very eager to accept ways of recycling everything from plastic and glass to tires. In this country, there's too many people involved in political positions that say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. It's all about the almighty dollar. And that is dropping as we speak. What uh, what kind of uh, what kind of regulations are are you putting up with? So give me some examples of some different countries that you're in. Um, well, in Africa, they, as long as uh, it is concealed from the public so they don't get too big of an idea, uh, you can have anything you want to use for fuel. And uh, they don't really care as long as it's behind closed doors. And you're just giving electricity to the grid so they don't have to get it from Obama. Uh, we have other countries that have said we want to have uh, individual power for each home on site so we don't have to put up solar panels or anything else. We want to pull the energy out of the air, out of the ground, so that individuals can at least have lights in their home without a bill. Uh, and to uh, South America, they said we really don't care about GM, Ford, Chrysler, and the rest of those guys up there. We would like to have cars that are efficient, that get better mileage and less pollution so we can breathe the air in our city. So in this country, it's all about how much money can we take from everybody and keep us all in debt, and down there it's about how do we get our freedom. So it's a totally different world out there. And of course, the New World Order is trying to make Africa just like America, just like uh, they want the McDonald's in there, they want everything just like they got it now. Yeah. And if you bought your system, we're going to send people in to rough you up and take you over. Now, I, I've got to ask you, you know, there's there are more Americans leaving America than at ever any other time in history. Yeah. Patri good patriots like David Riddell or David Von Kleist or whatever they, you want to call him. And I'm not sure what it motivated it. Maybe it was being uh, living with uh, Joyce Riley, but uh, he expatriated to Argentina. And uh, I've been strumming for 36 years saying, no, I'm going to do it here, I'm going to do it here, I'm going to do it here. And at this point, I can see that trying to market in this country, unless you're willing to work with the corporations and let them run and own you, uh, it's very difficult to get anything ever off the ground. So it might make more sense if I just had a passport to go to another country and market it and eventually start getting products in here. Uh, I kind of have more students. Uh, students here have dropped to a very low level. I mean, I, I'm lucky here in this country now to get two or three students a month from the U.S. Most of them are coming from foreign countries. Even my uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Jake Wade, who started Timothy Bible College and the Little Red Schoolhouse, 
he's got more business in Africa than he's got here. Yep. The, uh, now, let me, uh, let me ask you again. I mean, this, you know, we, we conquered this world with hemp. We, we were trading all over the world using wind and hemp for our rope for our sails. And uh, then we got then we got diesel, then we got uh, gas, and then now we're we're powering across. We can go faster, we can go straighter. We don't have to worry about uh, the wind not blowing. But the technology, the technology is there, Paul. And correct me if I'm wrong. You're the, you're the inventor. You're the uh, you're the the you've got more knowledge on this than I do. The uh, I believe we could take a piece of rubber hose or plastic hose, throw it over over the side on a ship or build an intake in the ship so the water comes into the ship and we can actually run our ships on the water that comes into the ship by doing the simple separation of uh, the oxygen and hydrogen that make up water. We've got, we're floating on enough fuel to run our ships forever. You know, but that put the oil companies out of business and therefore it's against the law. You mean when I grew up at my dad's house years ago, 1983, when I built my first gate, and I was running it on something I shouldn't have been. Uh, uh, and when I got there, my dad said, oh, my God, you're really running on water? I said, yeah. He said, you need a key to the house, a gate, and a garage, and get off my property. I just own you. I said, why? He said, i kill you. I said, where's the name? He said, the government, the oil company. You know, you're lying wrong, you know, son. Get out of here. And don't tell anybody I know how it works. I said, are you kidding? He said, no, I'm not. Give me the keys. They took the keys away from me and set me off. Uh, I lost a lot of friends that month because every time somebody heard what I was using for fuel, they didn't want to be around me. And finally, I got the picture that uh, if you want to live, you don't mark that. You don't even talk about it. You get it off your car, and you do it as politically correct. He's got a 50% increase, you know, everybody's happy. Americans, if you say, hey, you can get better tomorrow, they don't want to buy it. Because we've been programmed by TV, and if we believe that it is too good to be true, it must be a lie. So, run. Call the police and let the person know, or the cops know that that person is doing something criminal. Well, the best way up there is coming in with a 20, 30% increase for everybody a week from your wallet. They'll let me know you and hand you the money, which is another IOU. Yeah, you know, you take your money and walk off. But if you tell them you're going to get more than that, you're in deep trouble. They don't want to spend their money. Programming. That's what it's all about. Well, you know, that's what I've been telling people about the uh, television for years. When I started the militias in New Mexico, I said, you know, best thing you can do is take your weapon out, clean it, load it, shoot the TV, and you'll be a lot better off. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you ever seen a movie with Stephen Seagal where he's up there in that Indian outfit the front with the frame on it saying, someday we're going to have power, cars with no pollution, we're going to have this and this? He goes on for about five minutes with all the Indians. Right after I saw that, I called this producer and said, hey, if, if Stephen Scott really feels that way, would he like to cover a story by somebody who can do that today? He said, no, that'd be politically incorrect. And we're, we're really not into that. We're into making money. I said, you wouldn't really want to see that stuff happen? No. Oh, that's it. Well, Woody Harrelson, William Shagger, a bunch of movie stars, all met in Hollywood one day. So we could see the engine run. And as a part of there was a number of complaints of, oh, why did you shut me down? I do smog control if there's no pollution. Yeah, I know any money. The other guy standing there said, well, if there's no pollution, I'd have to shut down all my oxygen bars. They were more interested in keeping the pollution than getting rid of it. 
Well, you've just described the whole medical industry. I mean, they don't make any money off of you if you're well. And <laughs> the first half of the commercials on the Super Bowl for medications, the first 30 seconds of a one-minute commercial was telling you all the damage uh, taking this medication could do. So check with your doctor before taking this medication. Well, well, I hope that's good enough to get them clear so they don't get sued. But they really can't now. We got good attorneys, a lot of money. Uh, I had a doctor in the house one day come to school so he could learn how to build beat for his own cars. And when he looked over at my counter, he said, "Do you take those two cars sitting here?" Get over the counter, and, and he kicked him by. I didn't even require required. He just put it on the counter and paid for it. I said, no, those aren't mine. Those belong to my ex-wife. She just didn't take them with her. He said, oh, if you ever mix those, you're as good as dead. I said, you're kidding. He said, oh, why? I said, because every time she comes over, she has a headache, she takes my problem. He said, have you ever looked at the fine, fine print on the bottom? I had a big magnifying glass on, and I'm reading them. And it said, consult your physician. So I look in the PDR. And sure as heck, it says, do not mix these two products. It can cause death. Well, well he says, on the label, not to be taken more than twice a month. In such small print, nobody. I, I'm sure if you heard that to 100,000 people, you might find one that actually read that part on the label. You know, this almost, this, I just watched a little clip here, 30, I guess it was a 30 minute clip from an old Twilight Zone. And you know, this is a, this is what this whole conversation sounds like to me. Yeah. We've been, uh, it's like we've been, uh, we've been in a parallel universe or something for the last 50 years, 100 yeah. years. It's up. I, I, frankly, Paul, I don't know what the answers are. We have, uh, we have, uh, I, I've got uh, probably a half a dozen groups on my page that are talking about solutions that talk about the same thing we're talking about. And they're trying to organize, they're trying to uh, get some uh, help in their neighborhood. In, in local neighborhoods under their counties and their counties because not a, not a lot to do it's uh, most people don't have the money to go to Washington and uh, sit there and try to talk to Congress couldn't get through uh, the crowd of lobbyists uh, that are being paid to go in there and harass these uh, politicians we don't have any choice in voting I mean if you're a Republican I mean, well I'm a Republican well you you're a Democrat we can't get along how about if you're just an American? How about if you're just a human being here? Is this good for you? Is this good for your children? <laughs> now you're taking me back to that time when you and I left at the, uh, oh, the preparedness conference in 1999, the Y2K, where everybody was trying to promote their group. And I asked you a presentation. I said, you really don't want me up there giving a presentation. Because my feeling is, if you guys can't get along, there is power for the government. If you got along, there's power in numbers. So you guys don't get along. Why would I get up there and waste my time telling you how to build engines or how to pull electricity out of the ground or any of this? Because all you guys want to be in control. You all think you're right and the other guy's wrong. And it's like saying this church is right and this one's wrong. If you don't go to my church, you're going to go to hell. I'm sorry. Get along. You're brothers. You're on the same planet. Show me some camaraderie. Show me that you can get along in hell. I'll give you the technology. But you guys haven't shown me anything other than your rebels fighting each other, causing an inner conflict. The government doesn't have to fight you. You're going to kill each other. Well, divide and conquer is the oldest maxim in warfare, and that's what they do to us. Oh, you're a, you're a Democrat. You're a uh, you're a conservative. Well, I'm a liberal. You're a you're a you're 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 Church of Christ. Well, I'm a Baptist. You're uh, yep. you're Muslim. Well, well, I'm Jewish. You know, you guys are bad. You guys, they, and they want us fighting with each other. I mean, the the whole idea of World War Two, what a scam. 
the Cold War. Yeah. What a scam. What a scam. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Hollywood told you. The Russians are coming. Be afraid. Yeah, come on. Be very, very, very I don't afraid. remember from putting in bomb shelters. Yep. Yeah. You know, all the neighbors on my street just about one after another they were putting in. That was a sign of, well, you buy all the money you can to build a bomb shelter. So when they come, boy, you've got protected. Well, you know what? If all you're going to get two or three or four days in that little shelter, then you come out and everything's gone and you're radiated. Uh, is that the way you really want to go on with life? I think I'll sit in the living room and watch it come. If, I, if I'm not smart enough to go to a place that's safe, then I deserve what's coming. So I'm living on the edge of the ocean, and you know that cities fall into the ocean all the time, all around the world. We keep getting water levels rising and rising and rising as the land is settling down into the soils. And the plate tectonics are playing. Yet where do we go? We're going to go right on the ocean front. Look at my property. I can look at the ocean as it comes in to splash on me. I love that. Uh, now, give me a little higher elevation, thank you, a nice level ground. I'm a happier guy. Well, you know, nothing, uh, nothing's going to save you from a tsunami, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in, in Texas and Oklahoma, the uh, the whole idea of bomb shelters ain't that bad. They just changed the name of it. I mean, they used to call them, uh, you know, storm shelters. Storm shelters, yeah. <laughs> Bomb survival homes, yeah. Yeah, that's it's interesting too. Let me let me let me let me bring something else. This is or something else that just happened. And I'm pretty uh I'm still pretty bump puzzled about it. I had a gentleman that uh, I was put in touch with, I got a hold of him. He had something called the Noah's Ark project. And it was so close to my Liberty Village concept that uh, I thought it deserved some attention. So I put him on the cover of my magazine. Now the difference was my Liberty Village concept, I wanted to restore the self-sufficient family farm. And since we don't have large families to help with the chores, to uh, milk the goats, to uh, herd the cows, to uh, mend the fences, and to pull the weeds from the garden, I figured we could do this on uh, little five acres I had there in uh, New Mexico. We could do it on five acres by putting low-cost structures up. Teepees seem to be uh, uh, a, a rational, affordable solution. Figured you could have I'm six, a violation of building codes, but go ahead. Six, uh, I figured you could uh, sleep six veterans that are homeless right now. You could give them free room and board, put them in a teepee, and let them milk the goats, let them repair the fences, and in case of... Uh, invasion of illegals uh, that they could protect the place qualified to do that now Noah's uh, Noah West uh, wanted to uh, build a self-sufficient family home just a one home now he figured it cost four hundred thousand dollars but he was going to give you a better rates and finance it longer I didn't care for that plan but uh, he wanted to build them with veterans. I like that. Use the veterans and put them to work. And he wanted to uh, he wanted to do three stories. He wanted to put uh, the living quarters on the first floor. He wanted to put uh, uh, our living quarters on the second floor. Businesses on the first floor. And on the roof, he wanted a garden. And in the basement, he wanted a cistern, just like I had in my home in Bingham, uh, New Mexico. <laughs> A cistern uh, to gather the rainwater. So, and he wanted to put solar over the uh, over the garden on the roof, and that way the house and the family in the home would be totally self-sufficient. I said, well, I think it's a good project. I think you're wrong to call it a global village because global aid doesn't have any good connotations for me, but self-sufficiency does. And yep. so I put it on the cover of my magazine, and I talked about it on my radio show. And then suddenly I got an email from him saying, uh, I said, call me, call me, call me. I sent him two or three emails telling him to call me. The phone didn't ring. 
And I texted him and I said, are you all right? What's going on? He said, oh, uh, I had, uh, I've had to go back down the rabbit hole. I can't call you. You, you, you have a following. You have a following. What the hell are you talking about? You want me to take uh, off all of the information, all the links I have to your site about your super homes? He wanted to build them out of concrete. He wanted them to be uh, hurricane proof. He wanted them to be tornado proof. Thought that was a good idea. And uh, you, they're just too powerful, Clay. I can't talk to you. Well, I'm not taking the, I, I'm leaving the links up on my site to yours. But I will put an addendum on here that I no longer support you because you're nothing but a freaking coward. You're nothing but a coward. You know, if you, uh, uh, you, you want to advertise, you want to do this, I don't believe you're capable of handling the money. I don't believe you're capable of putting this together. So you don't have my backing anymore, but I'll let people see what you got. I won't take the links off of the, my site as you requested. I won't do that. I'm a reporter. Now, because he hasn't talked to me, because uh, he won't call me, because he won't have this conversation that we're having right now with me, I don't know what the hell happened here. I, it was, was he being threatened for working with me? Were they afraid I was going to make some money off of it? Or was uh, the, the, the way they work, you know, well, Clay's selling that book to make, uh, to, to, to raise money for a snitch named Wavos. Sorry, don't know any snitch named Wavos. Don't raise money for nobody but me. I will tell you about the geek system. I will tell you about Paul Pantone because you deserve the publicity. You deserve to be known. You deserve, and, and people need what you've got to offer. But you don't, you don't have to send me any money for advertising to get that. I mean, to me, it's it's uh, what we should all be doing is working together. You can build a geek device. I can't. And I can't use your geek device on the Harley because I'd lose my sound. <laughs> oh, you got to have that sound, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we had a few people do that, and they called that going, well, oh, it's better mileage. And I don't think I'm getting any pollution, but... It doesn't sound like a holly. No. You lose a lot of the sound. So <laughs> that's the part of the sacrifice if you want clean air and better mileage. Well, I still may, maybe maybe I can live with it sounding like a BMW. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sounds more like a family team. <laughs> but uh, now why would somebody do that? You 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 build a website because you want publicity. Do you care who said, uh, yeah, go uh, go see what uh, Noah's Ark Project's about. Go, go, go check that out. Oh, Clay Douglas told you to check that out? Oh, I can't, you can't, we can't deal with you because Clay told you. There are a lot of reporters out there and little groups, uh, like your own, uh, that will not cover the truth. And that's what really bothers me. Because they only want that big scoop, the big story that they can, they can be the ones to present it so they can put that feather in their cap. And then we call that reporter up and say, hey, that technology doesn't work. Oh, I don't care. Oh, I think reporters should care, just like you said. I'm not going to support this, but I am going to leave the link there because people need to know it. But on some of the things, when I've told the reporters, hey, the products you're covering on your cover of your magazine and in your article are BS. They don't work. I'm testing them. Well, I don't care. But in the meantime, all these investors and other people that see these BS ads invest their hard-earned money into things that don't work. And do they ever come back and say, hey, we did some testing and found out it doesn't work? No. They only put the article in there because they were getting money and they were getting paid to cover the guy. Well, that's kind of what's happened with all the other Patriot radio stations out there. They are being uh, supported by people selling this, selling that, selling filters, selling this, selling that. And uh, 
if you say anything bad about Israel, if you say anything about the uh, Jewish-owned banking system, suddenly they don't right. advertise with you no more. So nobody, everybody <laughs> tiptoes around it. Everybody tiptoes around it. And you know, I, Paul, I, I, I try to tell people, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment protects you. So if you want to hug a tree, go right ahead. Maybe I'll loan you my tweezers to pull those splinters out. If you want to bang your head against that weight of wall, knock yourself out, Jew boy, but I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to. Yeah, I'll watch you, but I ain't going to do it. And if you want to get down on your hands and knees, stick your nose in the dirt and your ass up in the air, if I happen to be around you, I'll try to keep the St. Bernard off of you. And if you're a Christian and you want to pray to God for Cadillac, I'll put in a good word with him so maybe he won't drop it on top of your dumb ass. The, it's, it's the rights of the individual. you got the right to be what you are, do what you want. The same thing about the gay rights. I don't care what you do in, a, in your bedroom, with, and I don't care who you do it with. But don't come and try to get me to do it. Don't try to seduce my children. Don't try to, you know, when, when ADL ran armed and ran me and armed and dangerous, tried to paint me as armed and dangerous. I said, well, you know, you asshole finally got something right. I am armed. You mess with my family or my country, I'm definitely dangerous. But. Again, this is the divide and conquer. You don't believe like I believe so. So, why can't yeah. they? Why can't they? Why can't people just accept that we're all different? Tell me, tell me your thing. Tell me why you uh, you're like taking the ass. Tell me why. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that I, I maybe I might be interested, but I doubt it. <laughs> You know, if you, you know, you, 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 you're a Muslim. Why? What do you believe? I mean, come on. If if we all believe, if all the religions believe in uh, one God, do you really think He gives a shit what you, whether you call Him Allah, Allah or Yahweh? No. Am I just being no. radical? Got, Am I too radical? I can, <laughs> I can help answer part of that question. It's all about greed. We want all your money, so we're going to say we're the only ones right, so you're going to come back next week. It's like a doctor, a psychiatrist. Oh, you've got to come back next week or you're not going to be fixed. You're never going to be fixed. You know, until he's ready to retire, then he's going to say, okay, now you're fixed, or he's going to send you to the next psychiatrist. Uh, I don't see psychiatrists being a needed thing in this country. Uh, people should talk to each other when they have a problem and work things out. Uh, we, we don't do that anymore. Everything in this country is fight, fight, fight. Because of the way we go program. When you go to a TV station, even PBS, your public broadcasting services and all that, you go in and say, hey, here's a new technology and this is what it does. Well, we can't put that on TV. Our sponsors are Ford and Chrysler and all these big foundations that give us money. And all that money is how we stay on TV and get new cars every year and we're comfortable. So we can't cover anything that might offend by paying customers. So now we can't put you on TV. Even one of them said, oh, we have some of them coming in from oil companies to make movies. We can't put Warner Brothers on the beginning of a movie about Paul Pantone. We don't even want that. So, no matter who I'm in this country, it's always about who's got more money to pay for that spot and who are their doctors. I put one TV ad on years ago for instant pain in California. Back when you and I first met, it was only on one time. The TV station pulled the ad, sent me a hundred percent refund, and said, "I'm sorry, we're not going to tell you who called in. You're not getting new sales from us, and we cannot cover you because we represent several other paint companies that advertise with us, and they don't want people to have paint for seventy-nine cents a gallon." You know, I wrote books 45 years ago, science fiction. I was uh, I was kind of into science fiction. 
And I wrote uh, a fiction about the uh, United States in the future when they had abolished all laws against victimless crime. And they closed down most of the prisons around the, around the uh, state. All except for states that kept it the same way they are today. All the Christians moved to there so they'd be protected from the drug dealers. And the rest of the states were open like Colorado is now. You can go into a store and buy whatever you want. It's uh, It was so radical that they, no publisher would take that. No publisher would buy that from me. No publisher would publicize me for that. And yet today, you know, in uh, in Texas, you get caught with a joint, you go to jail, you go to you you pay a fine, four or five hundred dollar fine for having a piece of a plant in your pocket. In Colorado now, you can fill up your pocket with it, and nobody will bother you. So I was a little ahead of my time. I was a little ahead of my time. Yep. And, you know, today in 20 states, uh, if you go bribe a doctor, if you, uh, you know, it's kind of like going to Al Capone and saying, Al, I, I need to stay in business here. So here, I'll pay this extortion money to you. So you'll leave me alone. So I can stay in business. I mean, they said, uh, why would I, why should I have to pay a doctor for something God gave me? <laughs> so the whole medical marijuana thing is just a scam too. It's a way for the doctors, for the pharmaceutical companies, to keep their hand in. I found out I was excited in Arizona when they passed medical marijuana. I said, "Wow, maybe yeah, for the first time in 45 years, I won't be a criminal." But guess what? Couldn't get medical marijuana because I wasn't sick enough to need a doctor. I said, well, you, you idiots, uh, the reason I'm not sick is because I've been smoking it for 45 years. So, this, uh, and, and today you can actually uh, get raided for having a tomato plant in your front yard. Oh, yeah. Oh, you would want to commit a crime like that. Come on. Might entice people who want to eat healthy food. We don't want that. We want you to buy the crap you get at the grocery store. Rats won't eat GMO modified foods. Well, if they get hungry enough, for them. Now, let's let's go back to the energy thing. There's been some uh, uh, reports that uh, we don't need gasoline at all. That uh, if you ran a series of tubes, hang on here, I lost somebody. I lost people here. Let me uh, bring them back up here. It was too good for too long here. Let me bring it all back up. Oh. Yeah, they cut us off there. They, uh, they don't like it when I get on these ramps. Oh, okay. Well, no big deal. Okay, hang on. Let me get, uh, see if I can get Truth Radio back up here. Oh, Lord. Okay, uh, we dropped off a few things. Okay. I'm back on Truth Radio. The censors are alive and well this morning. But uh, <laughs> we're back up on Truth Radio. I got Paul Pantone as my guest today. And we still got uh, Crusade. And we got Blog Talk. So, okay, we're still online here. A few places. Uh, the. Uh, where was I? Sorry. Where was I, Paul? Where did we leave off there? Hold on. Sorry about that. No uh, we were talking about doctors and attorneys, which is funny. When you go to their office, it doesn't say they're a straight D student or an A student. It just says they're a doctor or they're an attorney. But if you want to be a plumber 
and have a license, you have to go in and go through all this garbage and prove that you've got enough experience and you're qualified. And if one or two complaints come in, you lose your license. But to the doctor and attorney, you can have all the complaints you want, and they normally just ignore them. Who monitors all doctors? Doctors. Who monitors all these attorneys? Attorneys. And they're all buddies. So how do you beat that system? Uh, you don't have to really be qualified. You go through, you spend four years in school, it doesn't matter if you pass the classes. As long as you, like, we, you attend to the classes, okay, you're an attorney. Oh, you know it's funny? I started checking into law firms in every state I've been to, and I can't find business licenses for any of them. None of them ever get business licenses. There, but in every state, there's a law that says if you're in business, you're charging people more than $100 per quarter, you must have a business license. But when you walk into their office, you never see a business license. They're exempt from the law. Well, they're hanging in the city of London over there in England. <laughs> yeah, it's the they, bar. They ride the bar, you know, or the is. British accredited they registry. Have the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, oh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, there's a few things I can't tell you. I can't tell you if the mafia took over the government or the government took over the mafia. I can't tell you if uh, who won the Cold War. And I'm not sure anymore that we actually won the Revolutionary War. I mean, we yeah. pay, we pay, we paid off England after we won. We, I don't think you do that. <laughs> Well, see, growing up, I used to believe in Greenpeace, Sierra Club, Red Cross, all these great organizations that I heard about. Until I started meeting people on the other side of the fence that have solutions, and I became one of those people, and I called Greenpeace, and they said, we do not want solutions. We want donations. The solutions put us out of business. Oh, wow, okay. And being a 501c3 means we can take all the money we want, you get to write it off your taxes, we're helping to empty your wallet while we get to buy new cars for the sense of starve. So go ahead, starve. Send us that last dollar. We really need it. Now, uh, I remember I what I, I, I remember now what I wanted to talk to you about. Solutions. I wanted to restore, as Richard Kelly Hoskins said in his books, some of his books and his writings, that the foundation of every civilization was the self-sufficient family farm. Yep. Now, I had five acres in New Mexico. I figured I could house 20 people there. I could turn it into an RV yep. park, let 20 people live there in the RV park. I could put up 10 TPs and rent them out every night. I figured if somebody's driving down a back highway and they see uh, uh, what looks like uh, to them an Indian village all lit up, with a restaurant in the middle of it, a sign up that says vacancy and hot coffee. I figured I could I could make a living off of that. I figured I could do that. Now, I also started studying, and there's a uh, there was a company that started over ten years ago in New Mexico. I've heard more about them recently, and. You could put tubing, plastic tubing, around the perimeter of your of your five acres. I could have done it on five acres. And by running water through it, by running water through it, and putting algae in it, you could generate enough biomass a lot faster than growing corn. You don't have to make a
All right. You know, open your mind and listen. And folks, by the way, the Free American is what is a place that you can get the straightest information, the most information, the most useful information, and truth. I'm broadcasting on Truth Radio. I'm broadcasting on Blog Talk. I'm broadcasting on Crusade. I'm broadcasting on well, a number of other ones too. Talk Stream Live. I'm on there. So, uh, see a couple others too here. Just uh, put up on some new ones. Just got up on some new ones here. And, uh, that would be, um, where is it here? Oh, yeah. The, uh, we got a couple other things up there you need to see. The can away. That's the, uh, a way you can, uh, product of, uh, it's called can away. It's a hip lifestyle company with a focus on nutritional wellness. I told you that. Hemp's kept me alive and kept me in good shape for a long time. And this is the way you can get it. It's legal in 50 states. Can't get high out of it, but hey, maybe that time is still yet to come. At any rate, uh, my guest today is Paul Pantone. And the putting plastic tubing around your property, running water through it, pump the water through it with a solar pump, and you put algae in it. The algae grows faster than anything else on the planet, just about. And all you got to do is siphon that algae out and turn it into fuel. You can turn it into fuel. You can turn it into diesel fuel. Is that is that accurate? Am I being right about? Am I right about that? Oh, no, no, no. We've talked to people that are using it also for food supplements uh, so they can feed fish. You grow more fish in their ponds and they can grow more algae. So there's a lot of varieties of things going on with that right now, but most of them will be done by government and commercial applications, universities, where it probably will never actually get out to the people because anything that works is usually kept from the people. Yeah. Is, do you think there's a solution on this? I, I, I've made the statement, Paul, that uh, they have refined the art of slavery to the point the slaves don't know they're slaves. And, and that's echoed by some uh, great thinkers of the past that said no one is more enslaved by someone than someone who falsely believes themselves to be free. And I've also commented, you know, people are talking about, I'm not a slave, man. I can go out and get my pickup and go get a beer. Watch. It's called economic slavery. You, uh, you are, you're, you're a slave to your credit cards. You're a slave to your bank accounts. You're a slave to the electric companies. Yeah. The only difference uh, between where I was for that three and a half years locked up is I've got more room to walk around in here, but they still have guards everywhere. I think they're called policemen, sheriffs, whatever. Uh, but you still have guards, and they keep you in line. And as long as you're doing what you're supposed to, they let you wander and walk around and do a few things. You have your privacy uh, if you get the right home. Uh, but now that they want to put uh, cameras and microphones in all refrigerators, stoves, and other appliances, so they can monitor for marketing purposes. Right. Uh, I don't. I like my own privacy thing too. I think I'd like to monitor my own actions. I don't think you need to watch them. But the government feels it needs to watch everyone. It needs to listen to all calls. I did a radio show the other day, and we were about 30 minutes into it. All of a sudden, his computer lit up and it died. He plugged another computer in. Same thing happened. So he said, "We must be talking about something that's bothering the government, because every time you do something, it really gets them mad." You go offline. How many times have you hit that? Oh, about uh, two or three times a week. Yeah. Well, then you must be getting their attention. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I have. And what they try to do, folks, I mean, the, the way that the, they, they do it, I'm blocked in libraries, I'm blocked in Intel, I'm blocked into it. Hell, you can't even go into Office Depot and pull up Free American on one of their computers. 
they've got me listed as a porno site or something. That's probably because I got the uh, I got links on my site to the uh, protocols of the elders of Zion. No kitty porn on my site. No uh, nude uh, women on my site. But I got the protocols of the elders of Zion. And uh, you know, if you say that around uh, and there's a Jew in the room. Well, uh, you know you're on their list when you go into a car dealer and they say, oh, you, do, you can't even sell you a car. We can't sell you parts. We can't even sell you a gas cap. Get off our property or we'll have you arrested. Where's that? Who's that? Who's done that? Where's that happened? I'm sorry about that. Okay. I have what is called the, the Valley Fever. And I guess a few million people have it. It's just, it's not been made public. If you read us, it has certain chemicals in it. We don't want to mention that company's name. But it can get in your lungs and causes a fungus. And they don't have the cure for it. So people who die from this, they normally say, oh, they had pneumonia or they had a lung problem. They had COPD. Because they don't want to admit what it is. And what is it again? It's called Valley Fever, or San Joaquin Valley Fever, and uh, it's a certain chemical reaction uh, in the dust that when you're plowing the field, you breathe it in, and it starts growing in your lungs. It's like a nice, dark, warm spot where it can just grow and grow and grow until it chokes you to death. I grew up with asthma, so... Uh... <laughs> Here's how you asthma. Okay. There's times you cannot tell you your breath and you just cough up your stuff over and over and over. And everybody wants to take you to a doctor. No, no, no. If I'm going to die, I'd rather die from natural causes, not a doctor. You started out uh, during the beginning of the show asking about foreign countries. And I just got another one here. There's a, a company that builds a, a lot of equipment in uh, South America. They would like to become our manufacturing arm down there. I have another email that came in last night. And this is from Ukraine. They want to start putting it on ships as quickly as possible. Uh, every time a ship takes off from port or pulls in, it's $20,000 pollution because of the amount of pollution it puts out. Most people are not aware of it, but if you took the seven biggest ships on the ocean right now, combined the amount of pollution they put into the air, it is more pollution than all the cars on the planet are going to put in the air that day. Yet there's resistance to putting geek on ships if they're American owned. Now, you there? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm here. I'm, uh, these ships. Now, the, the, I, I had twin engine, uh, engine hatters. I wanted to put diesel in it. If you take uh, these boats that have got these uh, 400 horsepower motors or <laughs> diesel motors and yeah. you equip them with GEET, I mean, it would cost me $100 to go 40 miles to uh, Bimini. <laughs> uh, well, if we just did the mini GEET, uh, the, the, the newest version we're doing right now, which we just did some testing over in Europe on, and we found a way that we could modify a GEET very inexpensively, and for about $2,400, $2,500, you're going to get a 30% increase in run times per gallon and reduce pollution about 75 80%. Now, that's a very affordable thing, and truckers here in this country would be able to save about $13,000 to $15,000 a year in fuel. Now, we can't put that on personal automotive applications because it's not legal, but two weeks ago, uh, good old Obama signed a presidential decree that we have to have better mileage on those big rigs. Well, I think the truth behind it was they're trying to push a bunch of new trucks using liquefied natural gas. The problem is those are like driving around with bombs. I don't know if you've ever seen a fire, but when a vehicle catches fire that's got pressurized fuel in it, you don't go out there with a hose and put the fire out. you got to wait until it runs out. So then they have to evacuate a whole city block of the bus catcher's fire, and as that hose is flinging all over the place, you've got flames shooting all over the place. So to release a gas fire, they can go in and hit it with chemicals and put it out right away. 
with natural gas we can. So we already got these big bombs going down the road. Do we really want to put natural gas in them? No. Why not improve what we have so they just get better mileage? Right? Instead of penalizing the truckers, when they come in and say, hey, I'm getting 18 miles a gallon, uh, IRS nailed the poor guy, and he got charged for all of that taxes that he didn't pay because he didn't buy fuel to drive down the road getting six miles a gallon. We've got a system here that is all based on that money, and that's it. What about putting flyers for GEED? I mean, I've always been into marketing. Uh, you know, I, I've suggested that people, uh, uh, if, if, I, if you need help doing it, I'd be glad to help you do a flyer saying, uh, let's turn this block, our, our city block, let's turn it into a self-sufficient community. Let's turn, let's become self-sufficient in our block. Let's put solar on the roof. Let's put a geek generator in the garage. Let's uh, let's uh, grow food, not grass, in the backyard. Well, I like the idea, but to me, I feel like I'm fighting that windmill and playing Don Quixote because I'd be better off going far enough out away from a city where the land has no value, and then build a city well, uh, that it, is sufficient, pull the water out of the air, pull electricity out of the air, and enjoy life comfortable with no bills. That if you would buy, to do that in the city, you've got to fight the city, the county, everybody's going to want to get their piece of that action. They want you to look to their sewer system, their power line, their water. They want to take that money out of your wallet every month. But if they are in an area far enough out, which I thought was possible, then you could build a self-sufficient home until they come in and say, oh, it's now against the law. They tried to do that. I This was my original plan for Liberty Village. I own the north half of a two-house town in New Mexico. Yeah. Still on the map there, Bingham, New Mexico. And uh, that's a whole other story, how I lost my property there. But uh, that's what I wanted to do. But nobody could come out. Nobody wanted to come out and do that with me because we got jobs. We got jobs in the city, Clay. We can't. I can't drive 30 miles. I can't move out there. I got to drive to work every day. I got to be at work every day. So that's why I decided to modify it to the plan so we could do it on a city block. We could do it on a city block. Tell the neighborhood association to take a flying leap and uh, put solar on your roof or put a garden in your backyard and go to your job every day. Well, your house is paying for itself. That was, uh, yep. that's just one option here. That's just one option. But, uh, the, again, the, the whole concept, the original concept, uh, if, if you, uh, if you move all of your, if your neighbors want to move, if you can make a living off of, uh, the internet, like many of us do, then you can live anywhere. You can live anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got, there are devices out there for less than 500 bucks. You can put a uh, juice box on your, on a teepee. The teepee costs you 3,000, 5,000, say. The uh, juice box costs you maybe 1,000 with some, a uh, few extra solar panels. And you can power your whole teepee, your, Internet, your communication, your your uh, modem, and your cell phone. You can power it with uh, just from the sun. Want to get a little bit more fancy? You put it in a geek generator. And and uh, again, marketing the whole geek. What if you went into every truck stop and said, "Want to increase your uh, profits?" By 400%, not even talking about the gas model, just telling them you want to increase your profit, want to lower your fuel bill. Here, call this number. Well, we approached the uh, oil companies, and years ago I discussed it with Dr. Cavanaugh, who was president and CEO of uh, Texaco. And when I told him, I said, we could come in right now and retrofit every gas station in the United States uh, with a geek unit so that we could produce more power than that store needs so the gas station convenience store, quote, needs. 
just off of the vent into the atmosphere. And you could give the rest of the power back to the utility grid, and you'd be making an extra $1,200, 1800 a month per gas station. If you were not interested, we'd rather sell you all the gas stations. All we want to do is make money. The only way we make money is trucking fuel to you. So we don't make the money off the gas. We make the money off the trucking. But we don't want free power, and we don't want to clean up the atmosphere. Well, how do you fight we don't want to do it? Uh, we've got so many of these groups that say, we're going to Washington, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Well, Washington expects that to happen. It's good PR. Even bad publicity is good publicity if you know how to use it to your benefit. So then let all these people march across the country and do all these things to keep diversion away from what's really happening in the White House. And everybody's paying attention to the truckers or the bikers or this group or that group, and nothing usually gets done. Except the satisfaction that you participated. Well, I remember that satisfaction because when I was a young kid, 19 years old, I was out helping Greenpeace ticket. But if you'd have told me back then that all they gave a damn about was donations, not solutions, I wouldn't have wasted my time. I didn't get paid to pick it. I did that because I wanted to. I believed I was changing something. Uh, what really changed me over there was, what was it, 1993? Uh, I was in Marin County. And the people in that county voted, almost 90% of them said they did not want a jail built in front of the Frank Lloyd Wright building because they wanted to build a safe and free one. And the city commissioners all got together and said, we don't give a damn what you voted for. We're in charge here. Get the picture. We're building that jail where we want it. And they went ahead and built it. And everybody, even though they voted and said, we don't want it there, they put their tail between their legs and walked off going, oh, okay. But we're a bunch of sheep. We don't stand up and fight them. We don't file injunctions and throw them into court. And the court system's a joke. I mean, it used to be when I was growing up and I was younger, you got a ticket, you wanted to fight it, you went to court, told the judge you want to fight it. The next hearing, the, the guy your, that gave you the ticket's going to be there. Judge is going to hear it, and you might get a ten, twenty dollar fine, maybe even a hundred dollar fine. Now I don't care the, the, what they say. The cops will sit there and lie through their teeth. You can have twenty witnesses, and they'll say I didn't do it. Okay, he's an officer of the court, but we're taking his word for it. We're going to set a preliminary hearing, then this hearing, then this hearing, then this hearing. And you're going to end up going to fifty cases because they know sooner or later you're going to want to give in and just pay a fine. They always try to cut you a deal. Especially when they know they're wrong. But if they drag it on long enough, you get so frustrated. Okay, here's your thousand dollars. I'll take the plea. Well, they can wear us into the ground because they have all the money in the world. Us. Is there really a reason for cases where people have been injured, they're losing their homes, their families, and the attorneys want to drag it into court against the insurance companies for five or ten years? So the damages will be higher, so I earn more money. I'm sorry. Let's get these cases in the court and out of the court as quickly as possible. Don't let the attorney talk. Ask the person, do you want to get this settled right now? And in most cases, the people go, yes. Well, you're right about that. I, first of all, I don't, generally speaking, I don't hire attorneys because I'm certainly mentally competent. And uh, I got sued. Uh, I got sued. Uh, somebody tried to keep me from writing a story. I set up a company for somebody in Las Vegas. And somebody, uh, they sued me to keep me from putting them out of business. And so yeah. I countersued. I countersued. Showed up in court. And I went by the the court uh, opened up and uh, I walked up and behind the bar there and I'm standing next to this uh, another guy in a suit I was in a suit and he looks over at me and says oh are you Mr. Douglas's attorney I said no I'm Mr. Douglas your honor your honor uh, this is the defendant can't, can't you make him hire an attorney? And the judge looked at me and I said, Your Honor, if you'll read my uh, brief there, my countersuit, 
I believe you'll see that I'm perfectly capable of defending myself. And I'd, I'd love to be able to hire an attorney, but these people owe me money. I can't afford an attorney. Don't think I need one. And uh, the judge just looked at the other attorney and goes, oh, No, I can't make him hire an attorney. <laughs> And they settled, they settled out of court that day for about $15,000, and that's how yep. I started the Free American. I called up the uh, one of the stockholders in the company that I'd set up and said, hey, you know, I was in court today. That cost you about 500 bucks. didn't cost me anything, and I can do this every day. Or you could settle today for uh, 15000 <laughs> Well, I've had at least 15 cases where I've gone into court and the judges have said, we are not going to let you represent yourself under any condition. You will have an attorney. You will appoint one. And they postpone the case for another day. And in uh, Utah, California, other states, they've done this over and over. Not just to me, to a lot of people. We will not let you represent yourself. You have no constitutional rights anymore. I am the ruler in this room. That's what they say. Don't bring my constitution in my courtroom. Don't bring it. Uh, we got that. We're under military occupation. Everybody says uh, is worried about martial law. I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. You've been under martial law for about the last 90 years. Yeah. <laughs> what is the result of that? After after them telling you you can't have an attorney. What oh, they appointed an attorney, and the attorney didn't do any squat. In my opinion, most of the attorneys that I met in Utah were idiots. They couldn't even be licensed. They, they, they don't have a right to practice law. Uh, and when they, the biggest objection I had was they were going to put a psychiatrist on the stand, which they did. And she kept saying, it's my opinion. Wait, wait, I thought law was based on facts. What are the facts here? Well, if a court-appointed psychiatrist has an opinion, then it's considered the court's opinion. And they go ahead and hang you. <laughs> I was in so, San Antonio. It's a pretty one-sided, you're guilty, and that's it. We're not listening to anything you say. So you can open your mouth, but we're just going to ignore you. I think they called out a police state. But, yeah. you know, I, I, was in, uh, I was in San Antonio. I had friends there that got into transactional analysis. And yep. they were they were pretty social people, and so they threw a party. It was a fun party. They had uh, some uh, psilocybin mushrooms there that they they made into tea. So yeah, it was a fun party. But most of the other people there were psychiatrists. And I got in a conversation with one of them, and uh, he said, "Yeah, I had a, I had one of my." Patients come in today and thank me for curing her. Said she was cured, and uh, yeah. she she felt really good about it. And she was thanking me, and it took me almost an hour <laughs> to convince her that she wasn't ready. And I said, so you could keep taking money from her, huh? Well, you know what? You know what? I think you better get the hell out of my uh, sight. Right now, you better leave this party right now. <laughs> and he kind of freaked out, and he said, uh, "He said uh, the uh, host, my friend, uh, I, uh, who is this guy? Who is this guy?" <laughs> and he said, "Well, he's somebody. If he tells you uh, you better leave, you better leave." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. That was the biggest I, I thing out there in Utah. Was a guy who claimed to be a public attorney, or an attorney for the general public. I walked in his office the first time. He's got to have about 50 bottles of hard liquor right in front of the window. So anybody walking by his office can see he loves his booze. When you walk in, and he's sitting there chewing on his cud. So you sit down, you find out he's in charge. He's a director for the public defender's office. And they're all buddies because he's the head guy. And he said, uh, well, if you put enough money on the table, I might be able to get you a, a lesser sentence. But you're going to be guilty. And I said, well, do you want to look at the evidence first? 
thought you'd be wasting my time, but all right, since you are paying me for my time. So we sat there and went over the evidence and said, okay, you're still going to be guilty of something, period. You've got to find you guilty of something. And I said, I'm not guilty of anything. Now, are you going to represent me or not? Well, he called me up a week later, and I had a tape recorder going, so I told Mr. Appy, and then he comes out and says, I want another 50 grand, or you're going to go down. And I'm taking your wife with you. Now, you going to give me 50 grand or not? I played that tape recording immediately for these other two attorneys sitting in another office, and they sat there saying, well, that's criminal. That's against the law. You can't do that. Because they were all attorneys, they well, they were not really that criminal. I mean, you know, attorneys do things like that. Yeah, and then they lie to the judge so that you end up going to jail because they're ticked at you. And I taped the calls of that attorney because he was a lion thief. And it's all up on my other website, uh, the geekplays.net. We we have the tape recordings up there of these crooked attorneys. And the one says, well, oh, I'm the guy who got Paul out of prison. No, he didn't. He didn't do a damn thing except stand up in front of the judge and say, I don't work for Mr. Pantone. I took his money, but I work for you, Your Honor. Now, what kind of an attorney is that? I guess it's typical if you live in Utah. Well, this is... Uh this whole attorney legal system is uh, it shouldn't be a criminal justice system at all it should be criminal system it's uh yeah well it's called the criminal system for a reason it's protecting the criminals that are running it uh i took one case to court in utah and a cop a detective detective came gets up and says mr pantone admitted he did this this and this and here's the transcript of our conversation well, really, did that detective know I had taped the conversation at my end? And I had it transcribed out, and I didn't say that. So when it was finally my turn, I got up on the stand, and I said, here's a copy of the real transcript of what occurred between me and this detective. And I had the tape recording to hear to prove it. The judge said, no, I will not accept it. Why not? Well, officers of the court don't lie. <laughs> so even though the officer's in contempt and lied under perjury, you're not going to do anything. He's yes, I'm going to tell you to shut up. Because I know you're guilty. I'm sorry. I really lost something in this legal system a long time ago. Well, they not been so long so I was totally innocent. I would have been hung. They fought a war. England sent uh, their troops over to burn Washington, D.C. and destroy the 13th Amendment, which barred people uh, from even holding office that held a title of nobility, Esquire, uh, that every attorney has. This is your yeah. new nobility. This is your new nobility. And this is why our justice system, this is why our whole political system is so screwed because the the separation of powers doesn't exist. You've got attorneys here, you got attorneys there, you got attorneys in the justice and in the, in the courts, you got ter, uh, ju, uh, attorneys in the Congress, you got attorneys in the Senate, and you've got attorneys in the executive branch. Oh, they may have been disbarred at one time or another, like Obama. But uh, that doesn't matter. They're still a member of the club. And as George Carlin says, you ain't in it. <laughs> yeah. Now, again, Paul, the, the answers here. You've got the answer. You built these things. You, we know that you can do this. You can, uh, you can run that. Uh, you can be. Uh, I'm on a on a probably a ten acre RV park here. If you had ten acres of plastic Cuban, and uh, you don't even have to run it around the thing. You can uh, you can do it vertically, and uh, and take up less room. 
as long as the sun can shine on it, you can grow your algae. You can you can create your own fuel. And, uh, you know, I, I did want to talk to you a little bit about your marketing campaign. I mean, you, you tell people that you can run, uh, you can run your uh, automobile off of Mountain Dew. No, 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 no. I got a demo engine, which is an educational engine. One run Mountain Dew, sort of pop pee, whatever you want, that's fine. But we also tell them it would be against the law in the United States, Canada, and Europe to run a car on anything other than the prescribed fuel from the government and the factory. We don't want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, the, the point is the Mountain Dew costs more than the gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two cents a gallon is about what it costs to make. <laughs> All of that's the rest of money they make, they put into sports to keep you entertained so you're not paying attention to what's happening in the White House. Well, how about all of these inventors that were running their cars on uh, on uh, water? Uh, Good a one, yeah. gentleman in Florida, of course, they killed him. Yeah. They murdered him. And. and, and yeah, 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 yeah. He had signs on his vehicle uh, that it was running on water, and uh, they killed him. Now, yeah. now let me uh, also, there is one company that's been pretty successful. Again, they're overpriced, but that's Tesla Motors. Yeah. And Tesla Motors is running off of electricity. These are electric cars. Now, a hundred years ago, we had electric cars that were setting land speed records that were uh, doing wonderful things, and oil companies got involved and shut those down. But today, yeah. today, if you build an electric car, now, oh, the, the, the drawbacks, let's talk about the drawbacks for just a second. Well, the, well uh, if you talk to Roy Taylor, who's uh, about 80 years old, I think, and he had a bunch of electric cars, and he said that you could build an electric car that would probably go coast to coast, but the government would not allow it. They don't want you to go more than about 200 miles and be hooked to a cord, so you have to be able to stop and recharge. But as long as we can do that, or have drop-off points where you pull in and they pull your batteries out and slide new ones in and you keep going, but every 200 miles they're going to nail you. Uh, Shell did a study and said it costs more money to run an electric car per mile uh, than it does a gas engine because of the amount of energy it takes to make the electricity, the amount of energy that's lost getting it to you, and then by the time you charge, you're off gassing the batteries, and when the motors run, they put out a different kind of pollution. So you're actually putting out more pollution using an electric car than you would a gas car, and that's using conventional technology. But if you're using a gas car compared to a geek, and we've had exa examples on smog tests where we've had clear air coming out of the air pipe that there in the room. So what? Pollution is only there because it's big money for oil companies and political people. Uh, we don't need it. But yeah. they don't want that technology out to mankind. Okay, there, there is a very simple answer to this recharging the battery. And there is, I, I would talking about this and thinking about this for a lot of years but recently somebody came out with a wheel you bolt the wheel onto your electric car and the wheel as it turns generates enough power to recharge your batteries yeah well there was a car company that was working on a startup out of Canada and I don't think they're ever going to get to the marketplace but there was one called the Zen and they buried that one in a hurry. And then another one just popped up about a month ago. And it, all four wheels are generators. When the vehicle is moving, it is producing 80% of the power it needs for recharging. So that it can go almost five times further than any other electric car. The problem is it's too efficient. So we've got to make sure that doesn't get out to the public. Good gosh, we don't want to have competition for the oil companies. I mean, look back at prohibition. That scared the victims out of the oil companies that their farmers were growing crops and corn and stuff. They were turning them to fuel and running their tractors and not buying gasoline or diesel. And now that was hurting their industry. So what do you do? You ban all alcohol. And so you can get 
total control of all the spirits so nobody can make their own fuel now, and you have to play the political game, and now it's all like to drink again. So I'm like, marijuana, oh well, never mind. I get you back, so, so you find a way of controlling it and taxing it. Then go ahead and release it so you can still make all that money. Then they couldn't control the farmers still not wanting to do it, so they started telling the farmers not to grow crops. Now that works. If you can pay the farmer not to grow the crop, then they can't make fuel. Take away the desire. This whole thing to uh, hemp. I mean, Henry Ford built a car out of hemp. You could hit it with a sledgehammer. So that would put the uh, body shops out of it. A little ding don't cost you hundreds of bucks no more. And uh, you got... Uh, I, I don't know. It's just, we've had the technology for a hundred years at least to answer all of these so-called problems that we got, but uh, you're not allowed to have it. You're not allowed to know that. You're not allowed to see that, and they control the media, so it just keeps on. the The media keeps turning its head. They, uh, you're just not allowed to be successful. You're not allowed to be independent. You're not allowed to be self-sufficient. You're not allowed to be healthy. This is insanity to me. Well, I think I'd rather really pay a health tax and a water tax. Allow me to use a water for fuel so that we can remove the need for all those big refineries and all that pollution. And it's a tax me by the mile. I'd be happy with that. I'm not trying to burn the government out of its so we needed money for those inadequate roads they've been building for 100 years. I'd like to see them build some nice roads that actually last. So the government doesn't want to do things that work and that last. Because that doesn't generate more and more money. We've got to bring the public for every penny we can. Keep them in debt. We could probably run the country on what Obama spends on a vacation, uh, especially if he takes his dog. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we had a guy here the other day, he spent five days here from a foreign country, and he said that as a student in a grade school or high school, uh, he had to do a report on America. And he came up with a solution. Now, I sat here laughing while he was telling me about it because, God, I thought he was saying exact things when I was about 12, 13 years old. Give the people on welfare jobs, taking food, doing things that we don't have labor reports for. Let them work a few hours a week, hanging stripes on the road, sweeping the gutters out, so we don't have to pay fifteen, twenty dollar an hour city and state employees to do it. Let's hire these people, give them an opportunity, and if they don't work it, let them watch your clothes. Let them do things they can do, so they can feel useful in society. And we wrote this whole thing out. We got a, a D on it. Teachers said it's impossible, it'll never work, because teachers get a free ride, want a free ride. So the more people you put on welfare, the more votes you're getting. Because you're the guy encouraging them to stay there and not have to work. And generation after generation, we have people that want to stay on welfare. Now, I'm, I'm not saying everybody on welfare is doing this intentionally. They're not. They're trapped into it. We had one guy in California, when I first met you, he wanted to work for me. And I said, well, what would it take to get you off right there? He had eight kids. These are the benefits he gets. By the time we were done, I'd have to pay him $25 an hour to equal what he was getting. And the guy had no experience to do anything. And I didn't see it. He didn't want to get experience to do anything, because nobody's going to hire a beginner at 25 bucks an hour. So the guy's getting free rent, uh, his uh, utilities are being subsidized, he gets a check each month, gets free food each month, and medical, just a medicine alone. Wrapped him from $12 an hour to 25 So how can you compete with a government that is so generous with your money? And these, these are, are your medical bills, are these are uh, the, some pharmaceutical companies, you're on Medicaid, 
you're basically paying for everybody's medicine and uh, whether they need it or not, the the medical companies, the pharmaceutical companies are getting you to the taxpayers to buy yeah. all of this medicine that people don't need. Yeah. I don't know, Paul. I think I'm going back to writing science fiction. It's just more believable, you know? Well, I'm sure if we sat down, there are workable things, but we have to look at how the system is now working and does any of this make any sense. So we've got an ETA. They were originally appointed by Congress to be a reporting agency. That's it. Not a law enforcement agency, a reporting agency. And it's right in their handbook. They don't have, they're not supposed to have the right to carry guns or badges or any of that. They're supposed to go out and report. So Congress wouldn't get flooded by all these inventors. They come in and say, hey, I've got this new invention for perpetual motion machine. I need money for this. I need, and well, they were driving all the congressmen and senators crazy. The only people were coming in trying to get money. So they set up the EPA to set up some standards for testing so everything could be tested the same and anything that would work would be reported to Congress. Well, there's a great of kid guys that weren't being paid by the oil company on these committees listening. So the reason that the oil company, oh, we can't use that, oh, we can't use that, oh, we need more testing. So they built a wall and 690,000 people worked with the EPA to make sure people like me don't get to the market. But there's one little part of that congressional order that said it's a voluntary program. And if you don't volunteer, we can't make you volunteer. We don't have the legal right to endorse, certify, or approve anything. Well, people don't know that. And so I hand them a copy of that letter in that law, and they said, what do you mean it's voluntary? Why do they just spend millions of dollars for all these tests? Because you volunteer to. Well, they, you know, they're they're really fairly honest uh, with you. They tell you we got the most uh, successful voluntary income tax program out there. Uh, yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I don't choose to volunteer. Thank you anyway. But well, uh, I tried to file bankruptcy myself back in uh, 2003. And the federal judge called me back into the courtroom and he said, Mr. Cantone, uh, you don't have any records of any tax returns. I said, you guys erased me. In 1990, all my tax records were disappeared for five years going back. And I confronted the IRS on it and said, hey, why did you erase me? And they said, well, uh, there's been a, a notice put up about you that we can't let you succeed. So if we just erased you, we can come in and seize everything you own. But I had to prove my file them. Well, it doesn't matter how many times you file now because we're not accepting your paperwork. You're closing garbage. So I'm going to take out of it? No, you can't file. We're not going to let you. <laughs> so because of that, the judge said I can't let you go bankrupt. Only people who pay taxes can go bankrupt. Oh, okay. So the case was dismissed, thrown out of court, and I couldn't go bankrupt. But I can't pay taxes. So it's a tough thing to do, but they also make sure I can't open a bank account, can't get a driver's license, can't get a passport. Nobody can send me money. Uh, <laughs> you have to bring money there when you come. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting, Paul, because uh, I've said they didn't build that wall in, uh, uh, in Mexico to keep the Mexicans out. They built it to keep us in. Yep. Where do we go from here, Paul? I mean, you know, you, you, you more than anybody else understands exactly what we're facing. We're, we're facing a criminal system here. And uh, we're, I, I've tried to do things legitimately. I was uh, working with a legitimate Rhodes Scholar presidential candidate. I believe you got to meet Charles Collins. Charles Collins, yes. He yeah. died last uh, year or so ago, two years ago, maybe. Oh, Lord. I was hoping to see him at least one more time. He had some secrets he wanted to talk to me about. 
that were the private meetings between him and Hitler when he was a little kid. Because Hitler used to go to his restaurant and uh, hotel, the uh, Sheridan down there in uh, Alabama, or where, where was it? Was he Florida, Florida. Uh, he the, was in Florida. He had the, uh, he had the property on the uh, coast down there in Florida. Well, he coast. said Hitler used to go to his uh, restaurant and uh, it had two loungers, and one of them always made sure Hitler's favorite bands were going to be there whenever he was here. But that's where he had all of his meetings with uh, great people from our government, uh, because you know, it was a way from White House, and they could have private meetings, and he was always invited to sit in on them. And he said, the things he heard, that this man was really trying to work with Americans, and Americans were under the table working with them, just flying bullets and everything else. But I was in there like, you're kidding. He said, no. The government's always done these things. Didn't you know that? Well, no, this man gave you an education. Uh, but he had the documentation and the pictures to go along with it, that here he is having dinner with the man and his wife. And he had all this other knowledge about how Hitler was so mad when we wouldn't give him oil. But he said, well, I'll speak to every citizen in my country, and anyone who wants to come in can come in for free. We're going to teach them how to run their cars. In the, in the trucks and everything, on um, wood, coal, anything they can get their hands on for fuel, I'm going to teach it for free so everybody knows how to do it. You sure don't see many of those cars around anymore, though. Yeah, the, uh, now there's some uh, things flowing around the internet that's talking about how you can generate your own fuel from garbage. They yep. uh, they brag about, or they, they try, they're trying to say that we we can actually, uh, they do this in uh, uh, countries like, uh, uh, you know, the islands or the Philippines or something. They're generating fuel for uh, out of garbage, out of yeah. plants. So what about that? What's uh, what's going on with that? Well, not just plants. I mean, plastic is nothing more than gasoline, diesel, and kerosene. So if you put it on an electric burner inside a uh, pressure cooker, with a good uh, seal in it instead of a rubber seal, you have to put a cloth seal in it. But if you're running uh, the heat from the hot plate into that plastic, it turns it back into gas free from kerosene. So we have all this plastic around the world we don't know what to do with, and it won't disintegrate by itself. Turn it back into fuel. Bring the generators. Well, all these islands would love to have income instead of expense, so they'd love to start using their garbage. Now, we're going to be teaching uh, in the Caribbean here in a couple weeks. Uh, we have classes set up so you can see how to reuse all your garbage. I mean, everything is reusable. We don't have to be burying any dumps. I'm working with another major company right now that uh, is trying to dig up all the dumps in the United States and turn it all back into energy. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's just, if you're doing something like I am, you've got to keep your head low and teach each person just what they need so they can open up to right businesses under their name and be successful. Then we have another company we're opening in another state. They're going to be building the units for all the trucks. So any trucker who'd like to get that 30% improvement in mileage, all he has to do is call up and say, put me on the list. Now, at one time when we announced we were going to start giving trucks an increase, all the truckers got threatened. If you put meat on your truck, we're going to void your warranty. Well, it's been a lot of weather warranty for reducing pollution and getting better mileage and improving the engine and the life of the engine. So, GM, Ford, Chrysler, Detroit Diesel, and the rest of them want to file suits. Let them. I've got nothing but time on my hands. And I know it's going to cost them to have an army of attorneys, so I don't really care. But let's cut into their profit a little. I think that'd be a wonderful idea. Now, I tried to call him and say, hey, would you guys like to work with me? And after a dozen calls to Cummins, not one to turn call, that same thing. So, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's flood the market with them. And the truckers start saving thirteen to $15,000 a year or more. And the trucks go a lot further, and they're not selling as many engines. It might take a few years before they realize, oops, we made a mistake. We should have talked to them. 
So, uh, what about my idea of uh, putting out these flyers in all the truck stops? Just put them out there where they are, they all the free magazines. It's a great idea. But I don't want to let them know where or when. We want to surprise them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that'll be a private conversation. But yeah, we are going to be looking for a whole bunch of people that will do that. And I guarantee you, when you go to a truck shop and that guy gets paid to pick up his truck, when he finds out he can save 30%, he's going to be looking at the bottom line going, where do I go to school? So we're going to have portable schools so that will be popping up all over this country close to truck stops. All right. I'd, uh, I'd like to get some of my audio. I'd like to get my shows, and uh, I've been thinking about that. Let's, uh, we can do, turn my shows into DVDs. I've got DVD reproducers. Take shows like this yeah. and uh, put oh, this them in the truck shops. And, and if they start popping up all over the United States and all over the world, where truckers are coming in and in four hours they know how to install this thing, they go ahead and install it. And lo and behold, wow, I'm getting a 30% increase. What's going to spread real fast? I would think so. I would think so. I mean, the, the, again, we've, we've got the answers, folks, but it takes a little money for gas to go around. It takes a little bit of money for printing to put these uh, flyers out, and that's why we need your help. We need to, uh, I, you need to go to freeamerican.com, make a donation. If nothing else, just think of, of the information that you've got. What's it worth? What's it worth to you? can't get this from mainstream you can't get this they don't want to tell you they're not they're not going to tell you we will and pause uh, if you right now the free Americans being offered for free all you got to do is go to free American I've got the first 11 issues available up online up on freeamerican.com right now I sell I sell the new issues for two ninety nine, and uh, I used to sell it for five dollars in Barnes and Noble, but I cut out all the middlemen. And uh, folks, this it, it, it's a word of mouth. They they want to block me. You can't go into a library and learn about the Free American. You can't learn about Paul Fanton in the library, but you can do that on FreeAmerican.com. It's a way to, uh, it, you, it's it's empowering. It's about giving you the ability to make some decisions on your own. And there are answers here. There are answers that uh, we all need. Start taking back control. Okay, go ahead. Actually, you got seven minutes, and uh, uh, once you use that, I've told everybody where they can go, freeamerican.com. The links, the links to uh, Geet International is right there on the uh, on the site, on my site, and on the show today. Share this with some people. Start telling people about it. You know, the, the whole demonization thing that they've tried to do to me is to keep you from listening to this show. To keep you from becoming educated, to keep you from becoming uh, self-sufficient, independent. That makes me their greatest uh, threat. I'm their greatest threat. People like because I have people like Paul Pantone that give you the correct information. Go ahead, Paul. Tell them uh, where they can do, what they can do, how they can work with you, how you can work with them. Well, and they can go right to my website, Geet International, G E E T, stands for Global Environmental Energy Technology, GeetInternational.com. And my phone number is right up there, and my email address. They can go right to it and click on it and send me an email, or they can give me a call. Uh, if the line's busy, uh, try back again a little bit. I get calls from all over the world. I do lectures now right from my home on Skype. Uh, I, I'm right in the classroom, and I have students in any country or any state. Uh, and if you'd like to work with us, give us a call. 
Uh, we're, we're looking for dealers, we're looking for students. Uh, the classes aren't cheap, but we, they do vary. So if you cannot afford to come here for $3,500 for four and a half days, then pick one of the other cities closer to you. We have dealers all over the United States, Europe, Africa, uh, soon in South America, over in China, Australia, so in Canada, it's covered. So any place you want to go to school, let me know where. Uh, we're going to be holding classes real soon down the Bahamas, uh, Bermuda, and the, the whole Caribbean area. So if you want to go to school down there, it makes a good vacation at the same time. Plan on four days in class and go and go to the islands. So if, if you know where you are, we are ready to teach. And I can recommend a nice little bar there in Bimini that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. I, I, so, I, 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 we have people right now worldwide that are all trying to get set up as fast as they can to teach. Uh, it, it's a, a major tour. Uh, like I said, I was trying to market in America first. But it's gotten so bad I can't even find brass fittings made in America anymore. Uh, when you go to the store and everything says made in Korea, made in China, uh, and, and it's 39 cents. You want one made in America? Well, it's $89. dollars the only company making them now only sells the military. But they will sell them to you at the same price. So I'm sorry, if it's a 39 cent part, it should be a 39 cent part. Maybe a dollar, but when you're that high, no. Only the government can afford to waste that kind of money. All right. Keep me informed. We'll have you back on in a very short time. You got it. All right. Paul Fantone, thank you for being with me. You got it. We're God out, bless. We're out of time. God Until bless. Until next time. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. All right, folks. We're out of time. Go to freeamerican.com today. You can click on the donate button and uh, make a donation, whatever you can afford. You can go to uh, you can go down on the site. We've got a few of these shows. You can watch me doing a few of the shows. Share that with your friends. Go up on Facebook, Free American Six Nine. Go up on YouTube, Free American Six Nine. Share it. Subscribe and share the shows. All of these shows are up on Facebook Six Nine. The uh, you can order some of my books, or some of my videos, True Face of FEMA, Kim Trail, a few other ones. Up there, you can get my books, Mystery Babylon and the like. Do it. Make a donation. Whatever you can afford, or whatever this information is worth to you, make a donation today. FreeAmerican.com. Got links. We got other organizations out there. Constitution Club. I recommend you go to the Constitution Club. Got a banner up there for Constitution Club. Sign up and. Find your local area. Start county by county. Get with the uh, Keith Broders is up on my site. You can listen to some of the interviews that I've done with him. Click on that. We've got other other sites up there. The Union of the States. A good thing to do. There are organizations that are trying to do the right thing. Click on them and start supporting them. And if you've heard the show, go to my site, make a donation. Even if it's only a dollar, at least I'll know that we're reaching you. I'll know that you haven't been blocked. I'll know that you've got this information. Be nice if you could add a few zeros on that, but uh, do whatever it is that you can do. Not asking you for anything more than that. <laughs> you all.